Hello and welcome to another interview of the Wannabe Entrepreneur podcast, the podcast about what's really like to bootstrap a company. And today I have here Luca Micheli. Hey, Luca, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, Thiago. I'm good. I'm good. Really nice to meet you and uh, I'm glad I'm here. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to learn from your journey and we met surprise surprise on twitter <laughs> where <laughs> i meet all of the indie hackers and uh, indie makers at the moment and uh, i think it was actually an interesting story because i was um i guess you followed me or something and then you got my automated message uh, and then you detected that it was an automated message and you asked me like how did you manage this and uh, i told you about ivory Uh, which was created by another uh, Italian like yourself uh, with the same name, Luca. And uh, here, here you are. Um, you have bootstrapped uh, three SaaS companies and uh, now you are working mostly on uh, Customerly, which is a, a tool for customer support. It looks, looks really cool. And you've grown it to a team of nine people. And I don't know how many uh, MRR or, or customers. So you'll tell us all about that and how you're able to achieve these amazing uh, numbers. And uh, to kick things off, I would love to ask you to introduce your, yourself and speak how you came to this indie hacker scene and this bootstrapping journey if you don't mind thanks thanks Thiago for the intro um, I'm super excited to be here uh, my mission is to help and inspire at least 1 billion people so this is part of it and uh, I love the way to share my knowledge and I recently started to share my uh, projects and progress in, in public on Twitter and it's amazing what you can find on Twitter and the community that is out there As you mentioned, it, we met there and now we are doing this podcast and it's amazing how we connected also with Luca. We shared some tips and I'm getting tips from the community that I'm creating. Even if I'm still small, it's, it's amazing. I started my entrepreneurial journey uh, more than 10 years ago when I was at the university. I was, um, I was doing IT uh, in Rome. I wasn't interested that much to what I was learning at the university because uh, it was old. I mean, it was that okay. much interesting. I couldn't develop what I had in mind, what I would like to develop. So, and at the same time, I remember it was 2008. So the iPhone came out and um, I started, you know, seeing this piece of technology super cool. And, and I wanted to do something yeah. on that piece of technology but nothing in my university was uh, like nearly ready to teach me how to do that. So I bought a book, like the best investment ever with the highest ROI ever, like uh, 20, 20 bucks, something like that. I started developing stuff uh, and I did release like 20 apps, uh, Almost 20 apps. Yeah, almost 20. Yeah. The very first was something that was converting uh, Arabic number into, uh, into Roman. Uh, Roman and then vice okay. versa. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of tourists in Rome couldn't figure it, right, figure it out ah. how to convert those dates on the monuments in, in actual mm. dates. And it turns out that uh, Apple featured me that app on the stores as the one of the most important to have when visiting Rome. So I started earning a few dollars here and there, like around 500 euros per month. And it was kind of cool at my age. Uh, and my mother, like she was thinking that I was playing with the computer. After a few months, I was earning more than her and my father combined together in one weekend and What? the entire year. How, how are you making money with the, with the Roman converter? Uh, no, that, that was the very first app uh, that brought me like maybe 5K in total, not that much. But then I started doing more and more apps because I was like curious and I was basically solving all the issues I was having and, my, and the people around me, they were having. So the right. next most... Uh, but, uh, but so... In the in the the Roman app, you 
like people would paid. pay to use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the very beginning, it was paid. So I shifted so many business models with my mobile apps. Uh, the very first was uh, based on like paid because at the very beginning was everything was paid. Then I've got one bad experience. Um, I developed this app. It was a need for one of my friends. Uh, he needed mm. to track the time and it was super cool. A lot of people, it was a niche and a lot of people were using it. Uh, I've got featured on all the app stores in Europe for one month. And it got me, like I saw the spike of revenues yeah, yeah, the same yeah. day, around 200 euros per day of mm. revenue. And that was paid. Whoa. Uh, but do you remember there was Cydia at the time? So the day after it was hacked and uh, everyone can get it for free on Cydia. So I saw... Uh, I, from, I don't even remember what, what is that, Cydia? It was the jailbreak. It was the alternative app store where you can get free uh, apps. So okay. the day after, I saw the spike of revenue and the day after it was down to zero. Whoa. Seriously, like down to zero. That's and so was, shit. Yeah, so shit. So it was then that I decided that my next apps were based on a different model, not uh, paid anymore. But until then, you're making, you said that you're making more than your parents combined. Not that, that time is going to not, count. Not yet. Okay, later. Okay. Not, not yeah, yet. Yeah. Got, uh, it. Got it. So I switched my business models for the mobile apps from paid to advertise based. So they were completely right. free, but right. with advertisement and some in-app purchased. So I made like few more apps like that. Uh, in total, I've got like 60K downloads, but then the most famous app hit. And that app today has more than 10 million downloads. 10 million? 10 million. I've That's got, crazy. Right now, I've got more than 100% of the Italian market. What is the name? Quiz Patente is uh, is like okay. a driver license. It's an Italian uh, app mm -hmm. uh, to help people prepare themselves for the driving license mm. test. Yeah, uh, I built it up because my ex girlfriend wanted to prepare herself uh, for for the test, and I developed this app after one month. It was live, and then I've got like seventy k downloads in two days two three days crazy because there uh, was nothing like it in in italy no there was there were actually two okay uh but i managed to improve that experience because they were like shitty and they died for that reason mm -hmm. uh, i mean the, the user experience the ui wasn't that good i added the gamification that was the turning point like the the plus that, you know, that kind of people wanted into such yeah, an app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An advertisement-based model. Advertisement-based. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, how do you do money with advertisement? Um, so at the very beginning, mo mobile advertisement was a huge success. Like, I can remember um, on a weekend, yeah, I've got around... 11 or 14k of revenues in a weekend that's crazy yeah and uh, how old were you 22 22 22 and how does that feel at 23 <laughs> getting 11k in a in a weekend man i didn't know what i was doing seriously <laughs> i didn't know what i was doing i was just playing with things and to me it wasn't a business it was just you know, an app to do things to help people. And, uh, but it, how did this affect your ego? Like, were you, you know, going out and you know, showing, I don't know. How, how did you feel making so much? The money only time, apps? no, it's not, it's not about the money. The, the thing that I like the most is that at the very beginning, people around me started telling me, you know, I've got this friend of mine that is using your app. Yeah, and today, yeah. everyone is using it. So yeah. the thing that 
pump my ego is more that part. You know, I if I you go outside right now and I I stop by a teenager, I know they they are using my app because that <laughs> is the thing to do, uh, and it's crazy. That's uh, that's the thing that I like. Uh, earning that much money, it was a good experience, but uh, I didn't have at the time the the right mindset to put it at work. What did you do with the money? Enjoy it, basically. You, and you spend it all? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, I started doing some... So I'll, I'll tell you the story. Basically, I dropped out of school because mm -hmm. I said, this is going nowhere. There's no point. Yeah, yeah. yeah no point. Uh, I'm going to focus on this because I like what I'm doing. And after a few months... Uh, being reached out by a huge university in Italy. And they told me, look, uh, you want a scholarship, if you want to, to grow your startup. And I went wow. on Google, literally, to search the word startup. I didn't know at the time, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's crazy. So that kind of course gave me the ability to think about more in terms of business. I didn't know mm -hmm. what I was handling at the time. I was right. a child. Uh, I was a poor child, seriously. Uh, so I didn't know what to do and what to do next. Well, what do you mean a poor child? You're making I haven't like, had any money in my family when I was mm. young. So okay. that completely shifted my perception about it how did your parents react then when you when they saw you make 11k in a weekend i don't know it's like in italy the less you speak about money in the family the better it's uh it's a weird yeah. thing actually but they were happy for me of course uh they couldn't get what i was doing because it's like mm -hmm. so far from you know their Yeah, their jobs and everything. So it was definitely not easy to understand. Right now, they got used to it. Mm. Um, and like for my mother, were, was still something that I should not do. I should yeah. go to the university and finish that and get a degree. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I think now it's changing a little bit, but back then, uh, I think all around Europe, People were told that you need to get job security, you needed to go through university. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, doing some apps, you know, it might be luck. It, I don't know, it might just run out. And then not having your, your degree it can be really hard to get a job. At least that's what people thought back then. Yeah. I think my mother is still thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> really? After yeah. that success? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I've got famous, like I, I was featured as one of the top uh, developers in Italy from Forbes yeah. or from OD. Wow. So I was, cons like, I was everywhere in that period of time mm. because I was the self-made Uh, young yeah. guy that yeah, realized man, something because you're like different. 20s in your 20 early 20s yeah. like yeah, if yeah. you're an entrepreneur early 20s at that time so you said like 2010 or something um, yeah, i published squid's patente in 2011 but i started 11. like one one year before to do the other apps to develop the other yeah. apps yeah so that was the time at least here in portugal where like entrepreneurship was starting out and everyone was speaking about it Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're a young entrepreneur, yeah, the, you'll be featured for sure. But one yeah. thing that really, you know, as, as a person that is doing this for eight months now and, and making an MRR of $250, uh, something that you, that you made in, like, a day, um, I, I'm, I'm curious to know how, how you're able to make this happen because it seems that you're just like, yeah, I was just building apps, solving problems, and then getting millions of downloads uh, can you like now go back and see like what did you do right yeah to get so many downloads uh, there are a few things first of all timing 
At the time mm-hmm. I was publishing my very first apps, they were like up to 1000 apps worldwide. So it was completely different. Right now there are billions. There were only a thousand apps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's wow. right. Like I, I went straight to, I want to go there. I want to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I didn't think about, you know, I want to be there because I want to do business or money. I just wanted to put my things on that screen. That that was it. As I said before, when I released Quits Patente, there were two. Mm-hmm. So there was competition. What I did differently, I always searched for improving an existing experience if there mm-hmm. was no mark uh, sorry if there were competitors mm-hmm. if there was no market and i did some such a uh, the the roman thing i created the best ex- user experience possible in terms of design and user experience mm. right. that was my first focus could you do it alone uh, were you did you, yeah, did you have, like alone. design background I was alone, like I was just my myself at the very beginning. Then mm-hmm. I added another person on that project. Uh, but yeah, it was um, I was alone. I was doing like everything from UI, UX, backend, front end, uh, mobile apps, everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was also a combination of making a great product with uh, a market. It was like booming and there was not not a lot of competition yet. And you were one of the few apps available. So Mm -hmm. people were just buying. And one thing that is interesting that it seemed that apps were starting in what I believe to be a good path. So like you paid to use. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I, I love that model much more than advertisement, to be honest. But then there was this moment in time when people realized, ah, you know, it's internet. It should be free. And then, you know, this, this piracy came along and so on. And then it made you shift towards advertisement. So what are your thoughts on that? Like, uh, do you think advertisement is a good business model? Do you think people should just pay for the apps and that would be much better for the creators and for themselves? What are your thoughts then? there? I shifted so many business models and it really depends on the, the experience, the app and the service. Because for Quiz Patente... I've got 40 millions of impressions per month of banners. So if you have a good ACPM, that means uh, the revenue generated each uh, thousand impressions, you can get really good money. But Mm. in the last six, seven years, I saw a decrease of um, revenues or that okay. KPI. So at the very beginning it was super good, super, super good. I was having a, an ACPM higher than the average. And, uh, when I showed that number to, to the university, they couldn't figure it out. How could I have that kind of number? It was so high. I was earning $14 per thousand of impression impressions impressions so no clicks yeah. no yeah. no no so right now it's like maybe 14 for a small banner so it's completely changed uh the the revenue on that side and at that time i was thinking i couldn't get a dollar out of teenagers pocket uh how can uh... you how can you like they are teenagers, they don't have any money. And then I thought, they are spending for games. Why don't I build a game? And I did it. And I put some gamification plus a subscription. And the subscription are doing really great, actually. The very first week, uh, no, actually, after two weeks, I reached uh, $1,400 per day of subscription. Per day? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, absurd. <laughs> yeah, I published everything on on the on the newsletter. So there is the first issue released a few days back. If you want to read it, the full story. Yeah. So it's crazy. So I, I changed again the business model, and it was working because I observed 
uh, like not an issue, but some sort of behavior of my target audience. And I decided to put it uh, a, a subscription in it and it was working crazy. So what, what, what did you observe that made you think that... Uh, they were playing games. Worked? They were in, in between classes. They were playing games with each other. Like when you prepare yourself for the driving license in Italy, you're doing like 30 questions. And out of 30 yeah, questions, yeah, yeah. you need to do less than four errors. Otherwise, you will not pass. Yeah. And basically, you're comparing yourself with your your peers. Okay. Yeah. So they were comparing themselves. And I started doing some like, okay, if I can make this a, a game, it will change their uh. perspective of the app. And it did it. Like a like, game related to the questions, to the driving yeah, questions. Yeah. So it's right. like, I, I, I will not tell you the whole process because we can yeah, speak yeah, for yeah. hours. But uh, yeah, it worked, it worked quite fine. Uh, the gamification is still there. And uh, the subscription has been not a, like, it's not a SaaS that you have got customers for ages you will prepare yourself for the driver license for like six months top. Yeah. So that means yeah. the churn of that subscription is going to happen after six months. Yeah. So of course, it, yeah. it's like having, you lose uh, these, these users. Yeah. Right? Exactly. You eventually lose them. Yeah. 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 And this game and this game. So people, so at first you're doing uh, advertisement and mm -hmm. then you realize, okay, if I make a game, people are willing to pay to play the game. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Yeah, correct. And then how much were they paying? Uh, it should be around 90, 90 euros per month. And, uh, we 90, got... 90, 90? No, 19. 19, 19. okay, 19. Okay. Um, and uh, we've got three and six months. Uh, the most purchased one is the first. And then there is the six months uh, that is around 60 euros. Um, just to play with each other, just to play like a multiplayer game where yeah, you like to exercise and to be on top of the charts, you know, uh, because you will go faster in the game. It's so and, interesting. Yeah, yeah. This is crazy. so interesting. And, and the fact that you were able to see that, how did you get that information, right? Because how did you know that they were playing games in between? Listening uh, customers. Like, I was remembering, first of all, what I was doing at my age mm -hmm. when I took the driver license. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, with that kind of audience, I was serving them with customary surveys. That's why I actually created Customerly. Uh -huh. uh, and I was listening to their feedback and opinion about each yeah. stage of their preparation. How much of your time was spent in that process in comparison with building features? Quiz Valente wasn't that big in terms of project. Like it was just an app. So you don't have to add features and features. It was like it was there. And then I had a few more in, in the following years. So it wasn't that consuming, okay. uh, time consuming. After a few years, I switched completely the game and I put it under a new kind of design and everything. So before doing that release, I decided to go and interview them all. A different thing is right now with Customerly. It's, uh, it's an evolving, like a continuously evolving product that is needed to be in that right, kind of right, always right, right. changing thing. It's a yeah. SaaS kind of thing, not yeah. an, a simple app or an Yeah, app. exactly. So just for me to kind of um, understand a little bit your path. So you started building apps. Some of, all of them, or most of them are still available and some of them still give you money, kind of a passive income, right? No, I sold them all. I mean, so I shut down the, like, all of them, except for Quiz Patente when I saw that Quiz ah, Patente was doing good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I focused on just one thing, just one project. I couldn't figure it out to, you know, focus on different okay. stuff. Why not just keep the others running in the in the back burner? They were, they were. But after a while, they started, you know, get obsolete and Apple started doing, 
you know, killing them ah, if you yeah, didn't yeah, update it. them. Uh, and then, of course, I started developing the SaaS for driving schools to connect with Quiz Patente. So driving schools needed to connect with um, with their students on the app. Mm-hmm. That's when I started building SaaS. Okay. 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 Got it. Um, so, so when did you kind of assume that this would be your life uh, to be an entrepreneur? So you quit college, you start building these apps, suddenly you start making money, then you get this kind of scholarship. When did you, I don't know, told to yourself that, okay, no, I, I'm going to be an entrepreneur now? Uh, during the scholarship. Okay. I mean, I, I never had a pay slip before. Never. Mm-hmm. Like, I never worked for anyone else rather than me. So mm-hmm. I never had that kind of experience and sometimes I'm missing it. Like I'm missing the things that are happening on the other side. But what do you I, miss? Like I was speaking with my girlfriend and, you know, like the basic stuff, like getting an interview, a job interview. I never got a, a job interview on the other side. It so, sucks, man. No one wants yeah, it. <laughs> I mean, it's and when I had to do my first job interview on the other side as an as an entrepreneur, it was like, okay, I never did the experience on the other side. So yeah, I did yeah, I don't yeah. know what it is. But you, you, you can do it. You can just do it. Apply for a job, do an interview. Why not? <laughs> if you want yeah, to get the experience. I don't know. Like I don't know how, how can I position myself right now. It doesn't <laughs> like, matter. Don't... You don't you don't need to take the job. You just need to take the interview. Fair enough. Do that. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> for sure people would like to interview you. Uh, it's yeah. not that fun. Uh, I, well, I don't know. So you you miss interviews. What, what else do you miss? Like, I guess like colleagues and no one thing that I that I really liked and I miss now when I was working for for Trivago, um, and then the other startup I work like these companies they kind of manage your life somehow. Like you have events, you have like parties, you have food. All of this is kind of managed for you. Um, and then when you are an entrepreneur, you can feel very much lonely because you have to manage all of these things. So this is something that I definitely miss. That's true. Uh, at the very beginning, maybe I was kind of alone when I was doing Quiz Patente, but I was sharing a lot of uh, insight with other peers, like others entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And I met my co-founders of Customerly over there. Like we were sharing everything, like what we are doing right now, building in public. Basically, we were doing with each other. So in the, in the scholarship, felt, uh, yeah, through the scholarship, we met mm-hmm. together there. Okay, um, okay. you never I felt never, alone. N- not that much. Uh, okay. No. Also, because when we founded customerly when we started working on customer we were three mm-hmm. um then yeah, five then not i mean it was yeah we were having so what fun. do you miss i'm curious like i've never heard this like an entrepreneur saying that like yeah you know i miss uh having the experiences of, of a normal job like wh- what is what is it missing for you i don't know what it is so sometimes i ask myself what what it is i never had that experience in in my life i never right got a basically i never had a boss <laughs> like yeah i i, I mean i'm <laughs> figuring myself uh as a as a leader for my team yeah but i never got a boss to compare myself with you know either way yeah. so it's like i don't know something that I well, Zuckerberg it's... also never had a boss. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I guess. And Elon Musk, probably. Yeah, that's a very fair, interesting topic. Like, there's a lot of, you know, top bosses, top CEOs that never actually had a boss. <laughs> yeah. So, how to figure that out? Like, how, how are you, like, do you ask questions? Do you read books? How do you figure out how to a be a, a good boss? A lot of books. Yeah. Um, and always wanted to like I like to treat people how I would like to be treated. Yeah. And one of the best book I ever read about this was the uh, I don't remember the name in English. I read it in Italian a few years back. Is like how to influence people. 
Okay. Um, from Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just amazing. So it's an and interesting. It yeah, yeah. And also, I was an introvert because you know developers, <laughs> yeah. kind of behind the scene, always working on a keyword. Um, and all of the sudden, with the exposure I've got from Quiz Patent, I've been speaking to 500 people on a, in a room or in television or newspaper. Like, it was crazy. And I wanted to do something more. Like, I took a course about leadership to learn mm -hmm. more about you know, how to manage a team, how to connect properly with people, how to speak in public, everything, everything. Okay. Was so good. Yeah, we need to learn somehow. And mm -hmm. uh, there's so much information out there that, uh, yeah, it just, it just for grabs, I think, nowadays with the internet and, and, and everything. You figured out that, okay, you want to be an entrepreneur. And uh, you killed all the other apps. You just... Continued with your uh, driving license, uh, quits patente. I don't know if I said it properly. Perfectly, actually. <laughs> oh, good. And um, tell me, where does customerly come into play? As I told you before, we were doing a SaaS for driving schools, mm -hmm. and we were having a lot of customers on the apps, and I wanted to do basically three things with them. The first thing was how. I was getting so many different messages and from on different channels such as WhatsApp or mail or phone everywhere of feedback on the right. SaaS. And the information was cut red. And also mm -hmm. I didn't have a proper admin panel where to quickly look and at their information. So to whom I was speaking to and how can I uh, like keep track of the communication between the, the dev team and the, uh, and the customer on the other side. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started thinking to create not a product within my SaaS, but extend External. the product, mm -hmm. like create a, some sort of, I don't know, it's, I don't know how to call it. Yes, kind of a spin-off, exactly. Yeah. Um, and with this friend of mine, Daniele, is, um, he's the CEO of uh, Fatura and Cloud. Mm. It's an invoice, it's the leader invoice uh, system in Italy. Uh, he was having the same issues with his customer. He's got a SaaS for invoicing, uh, same stuff, uh, same automation stuff, same mm. uh, communication issues. And we decided to team up together. The challenges were super high because we needed to do so many things that we never done before. Right. Um, that's when we decided to create Customerly. Yeah. Okay. So it came from a problem that you had. And you, you know, you start suddenly mention and, and speaking in the, uh, is it the first person of the plural? Like you, you start saying we, so instead of I, right? So now you have, when you, I guess you joined this, uh, this accelerator and you, you got two co-founders. Was it correct? Yeah. I never joined the accelerator. Uh, they asked me to join them for like an amount that I didn't want it to share, okay. Uh, okay. but I met this friend of mine and co-founder uh, and we decided to team up a few years later after okay. we've been in San Francisco because we won another scholarship in San Francisco. Uh, Both of to you learn... together, but in different projects. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. I was doing okay. my SaaS and he was doing his own SaaS. Mm. And after, you know, coming back, uh, we decided to team up and uh, we created customer a few months after that. Okay. Uh, so in Quit Patente, you never had anyone working with you? We had, yeah, yeah. Actually, after a few years, I've got my uh, co-founder uh, that now is a shareholder as well in Customerly. We exited uh, Quiz Patente together. 
Okay. So it has been acquired. So you sold it. It's not. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Quiz right. Potential and they and at it's an NDA. I cannot tell you, but it's uh. a, it's a hundred of thousand of euros. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Good. After a few years, we were working on daytime on our main project and nighttime and weekends on customerly. So it was <laughs> super. I love shallow. when this happens. I love when they like you have an entrepreneur working on their entrepreneurial project as your their main project and their side project is another entrepreneurial project. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's amazing. It's just the the spirit of, of an entrepreneur. Yeah, uh, that's great. And uh, how how is it like to go from a solo founder, you know, doing everything your own way to work with someone else? Definitely a challenging experience. Uh, I wasn't used to like delegate at the very beginning because the app were simple to do yeah. but then i realized i couldn't do anything like customerly all along i cannot figure it out how, how can i build such a thing with uh with no one um what, what were the challenges was like the the, the coding itself uh, no per no man personal challenges like the psychology behind you know you need to start thinking that you can delegate, you must delegate, mm. and you need to trust what you delegate. That's right. the thing. Because if you don't have trust on what the other people will do, you will be fucked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the thing. You know, but you know, that's a, a huge issue uh, for entrepreneurs, I feel, because sometimes. We all got burned already, right? And even even uh, recently in the community, uh, Max, a member, was saying that, you know, he keeps on trying to start projects and people is like a business marketing background and the developers that work with them always end up like stopping or they're not motivation. They don't have the motivation to continue. And the same already happened to me. So now I'm at this point that I don't delegate anything that is critical uh, for my business. Sometimes people ask me like, ah, I want to help or something. I never delegate something that is critical because I was burned so many times that I think I, I don't want you to ruin my business. So I guess it must be really hard for you to start delegating something that is critical because if they suddenly want to do something else or they, I don't know, meet a girl or, or a boy and want to move and do something else, then your business is, is fucked, right? So I guess, mm -hmm. what, was that the issue, like, to be able to give something that is crucial to your business? I didn't know what was crucial to the business. So then I was okay. having that kind of mindset that I could do everything on my own. So it was definitely something I should have get rid of as soon mm. as possible. And I started doing it. I, I needed to trust other people to do things and uh like when we created customerly we were the three of us and my trust on their side was 100 and i had another experience later like uh last year with uh, the sales process um i outsourced the sales process the cold outreach because i I felt we need a proper sales process in place. Mm -hmm. And I never had that kind of experience in customer. We, we never had like direct sales experience. Um, so I found this company and I wanted to outsource that. And I learned mm -hmm. the hard way after spending 36K, uh, almost all of them wasted, um, that you, you cannot build something such as the sales process without building it you first like i was thinking that yeah. they could help me to build the entire process yeah. but the actual process should be on your own and then you need to outsource uh, you need to share your knowledge on how to mm -hmm. build that sales process so trust it's a, a really delicate thing but i learned uh, to trust more and uh to share trust with partners or with uh, with other collaborators, such as um, uh, the designer team we hired, it's uh, it's amazing. And um, trust is mm -hmm. super important, man. Like you cannot go that far solo. 
you right. need great people to build great businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, to build a thing such customerly, it's yeah. impossible to do it alone. Seriously, yeah. impossible. So, what what is the what 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 is your pitch for customerly? Like, what what is customerly for the listeners that don't know about it? Right now. Uh, we are targeting B2B SaaS and we are helping them to better communicate with their customers on the platform. And to communicate means support, engagement, such as marketing automation or gather feedback through in-chat surveys. Mm. Um, I was having this issue, man, to answer to this question because... Customerly can help such different variety of personas, right. uh, but it was always an issue for us because we weren't positioned properly to anyone. Oh, got it. Um, but the thing is, our best customers are SaaS, B2B SaaS. Mm-hmm. And the most value they see is in you know the communication part with the, the live chat and the inbox. But then the marketing automation where you can build workflow to shoot emails at the right time to the right customer. And you can also what... do that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you're basically gathering all the information you want from the user and the behavior they're having on your SaaS. And based on that behavior, based on their status, their properties, you can shoot emails or live chat messages within your app. Ah, so it's not only for user support, it's also for marketing then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because when I when you open the website, uh, you see that you have like a, the classic little chat uh, mm-hmm. box on the bottom right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you also have a kind of a Slack chat, you know, similar to Slack somehow, where you have like your users on the left and you have your messages and you have like kind of groups. And then you can chat with them like you're exactly. chatting with your peers on Slack. Correct. Yeah? yeah. And then you can also then send emails and set up like this kind of, uh, is it like CMR uh, automation and, and do Correct. some marketing in this kind of stuff. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's one very place complex to product. communicate with all your customers. All right. So now that we established wha- what the customer is, what what was the first version of it like uh, what, what was like the the features that you said okay we need to have at least these to to do the release <clears throat> if, if i can show you like the screenshots of the very first release you, you will laugh basically it was <laughs> so shitty man and uh, the code base was so shitty like right now we grew so much but the very first beta we released to some friends of ours was the, the live chat with just the communication, the inbox with just very few features to communicate with your customers, such as mm-hmm. open tickets, closed tickets, and the properties of the user. And uh, the customer segmentation, what we today call contacts with the filtering option, mm-hmm. it was also there, not powerful as it is right now, but definitely you can create segments and understand their customer base. That mm-hmm. was the very first iteration. And uh, how, how did you launch it? Like, did you, what is the, yeah, what is the launching process? We never launched it. Like, seriously, we never launched it. We delivered it to very few people, like six of our best friends with SaaS businesses. Mm-hmm. And we started getting traction with the uh, with the power by l- label on the chat, right. so people yes. yeah. checking that uh, we grew organically up to six mm. or eight thousand signups thanks to that. So we never actually launched. We never focused on one specific customer persona because we had that kind of growth, uh, organic growth. Mm-hmm. And then after that. You did, um, and I, I read a very interesting blog post you wrote, you did the lifetime deal, uh, which yep. was kind of a way that you, you mentioned in the blog post. I know that you may, might change your, change your mind a little bit because this was 2019, 
but uh, was your way to raise money somehow, raise money from your customers. You sell lifetime deals and you were able to raise or together $60,000 or euros. But you, you're telling me off, off record that you kind of changed your mind a little bit, that maybe this was not so good, this lifetime deal. So tell me why. We initially thought that we could get a little bit more traction from the LTD launch. And uh, it was certainly something that created some hype behind the product. But after a few years, I can tell you that the hype that was created from the LTD community mm-hmm. is not the hype that will bring money on the long term. So right. if you're searching to build MRR, that's not the right strategy. And you're mm-hmm. going to focus on people that will not give it, give you any any dollar out of it. So even if you're hunting more and more things, it's not working. Like we had out of 2000 sales, we had one person converting to an actual plan, like an actual paid plan on MRR. <laughs> and that's okay. something like crazy and uh at the same time if they time, got a lifetime deal why would they convert uh, lifetime because, deal what does it mean lifetime deal actually uh sure so basically lifetime deal it depends what's your offer what you're going to offer and at the time we offered the pro plan at 49 i don't remember exactly but we shared with them the pro plan the pro plan is um It's having 5K contacts to handle. And if you need more, it means if you grow more than 5,000 contacts, you will need to pay the enterprise. Mm. Uh, So out of those, just one converted to an enterprise. So either they are really small or either they will never pay. And I saw a lot of bad stuff happening after that. So people reselling coupons, uh, it was legal really? per contract yeah, oh. and, yeah. <laughs> like people after years our customers after years switched to an ltd plan and that was like a red flag what what is happening why like after two years they started using an ltd that was owned by another person ah. what's happening and uh, so there is a oh, lot that's of not nice no no there are a lot of things that are you know shady And also mind that you're getting feedback from a user that paid once and will never pay again. So basically you're getting feedback from people that want everything for free and want to have still everything for free, no matter what. Be very careful on, you know, the feedback that you're getting from Mm -hmm. what kind of customers you're getting, because on the long term it's definitely not bringing good results so Mm. my take-home lesson after a few years is that if you want to build a sustainable business on on the long term just go for searching for right customers you you have to update that blog post then (laughs) yeah yeah definitely as a a last question for you uh, before we terminate this session um when you're looking for a new idea when like a new idea pops up in your head what makes you pursue this idea and think, okay, maybe I can make a business out of it in comparison with what makes you discard this idea? What what signs do you look for? Good question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely multiple answers because it depends on what kind of idea. If you have a SaaS and you want to implement another feature in your SaaS, um, even if it's like the smaller feature, you need to understand if, people will actually use it. I wrote a tweet the other day that the more feature you will build, the more time and effort you will need to put in order to sustain it, to manage it, to, uh, you know, support it. And with a product like custom, where we have seven products with small features, small and big features in it, (laughs) like it's crazy. Like, the amount of things you need to do to uh, support all of them, it's mental. So when it comes to building new feature, I want to validate as much as possible. 
and we have a public roadmap where we send our uh, customers to put their idea and vote the best. And we then analyze if the idea can be interesting to bring to other people. Regarding new businesses, I started quitting doing more and more projects. So I did launch a lot of new projects in my life. And uh, I always... A lot of them failed as well, I guess? No, no, no. I mean, after the apps, maybe did two more. Okay. Yeah, that I shut them down but mm-hmm. uh, they were never launched as a business like they were just small projects mm-hmm. um, I started another one that is successful it's, it's running really good I started doing more and more lean launches with just one single form and Facebook advertisement to test the viability of the idea so before touching any line of code, I started doing some type forms or Google forms, whatever, uh, with, Google, with Google ads or Facebook ads with a single like step, a, a single thing that is going to um, tell in a few lines what is going to be the product. And if I see a good engagement and a low cost per acquisition, I might want to go that path down okay so it really depends on the kind of idea you're getting yeah yeah very interesting and i always advise the same like don't start building before you know that people will buy it kind of kind of you know so it's very interesting also that approach with uh with facebook and um if you have any blog posts around that where you explain that better uh Please send it my way. I will share it in the show notes of today's episode. Okay, it was a pleasure to have you here in the Wannabe Entrepreneur. Thank you so much for your time. It was really nice. Thank you, Tiago. It was, it was a pleasure to share the knowledge and, uh, and uh, to impact somehow your community. Love to, to meet them as well. Thank you so much, Luca. And now for the listeners, if you are an indie maker and you are in the first steps building your projects, you want to transform your ideas into a business, make sure to check out my community, the WB Space. We are more than 50 indie makers all working together building their own projects and suddenly it doesn't feel alone anymore it's like having our little team it's just really really nice so if you want to join the link will be in the description and uh, if you are interested in this kind of interviews and chats with other bootstrappers make sure to go to wannabe-entrepreneur.com slash episodes Again, the link will also be in the description, so no need to memorize this. And this was another wannabe entrepreneur. See you next time.